from the Google Dolls. We're at GCR Studios, GCR Audio. You can give us a little walkthrough and a tour and let us know what this place is all about. Yeah. Have at it. All right, well, come on in. Come on in. This, uh, this studio, it's been here since 1974 as a, no, excuse me, 1984 uh, as a studio. Uh, they started uh, the design of it with a guy named John Stork in the early 70s. And, uh, ended up building this room out. John Stork was super famous for doing a lot of some legendary studios like uh, Electric Lady in New York, Jimmy Hendrix's old room, and, uh, the, uh, the record plant, and, you know, uh, some big name places. And uh, we actually ended up bringing him back many, many years later to redesign this place to work here with Goo Dolls and uh, we did our last record in this building actually. But the history of the building prior to that, it was a convent actually, uh -huh. and a girls school. And this was the chapel area of that, this obviously being two floors now, but uh, this was the chapel area. So come on in. This is the, uh, <clears throat> this is where we watched Barack Obama on TV and uh, Pretty much because the way things work these days, you can use any space as a studio. So this happens to be my studio at the moment that I'm working on some stuff for my Among Us set at the Music is Art Festival. Uh, but otherwise, it's our lobby. Right here, this is uh, the schedule of this year's Music is Art Festival. And if you do a quick pan to the right there, that's the poster for it. And uh, that's going on this Saturday at the Albright Knox Art Gallery. On September 11th, 2010. Here's our schedule. We've got tons of stages, DJs, country bands, rock bands, jazz bands, marching bands, DJs, dancers, magicians. Uh, it just goes on and on. And it sounds like I'm lying, but it's really true. And it goes on from 10 in the morning until 10 at uh, night. This is the kitchen area. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Downstairs, these are two other studios that I rent out to some friends of mine. Uh, Jay Zabricki, he's in the back, and Anthony Casuccio, he's here. And if you give it a spin around, this is our record company office here. This is, uh, we just, uh, we've been on our label here since 1980, excuse me, since 1980. Holy cow, that would have been a while ago. Yeah, yeah since uh, 2003, we've been running the label. Uh, first signing bands from Buffalo. We signed about five, six bands, put out a bunch of records. And uh, recently, my wife uh, is from Japan, and we started seeing a lot of bands in Japan. And uh, she works with a band called Shonen Knife, and they put out uh, many, many records over the past thirty years, and toured all over the world, and uh, with bands like Nirvana. And They've done a lot of really great stuff, so we release all their stuff now on Good Caramel Records, which is uh, my record label. And uh, we just signed four more bands from Tokyo as well, um, and released a record called I Love J-Rock, which has uh, come out nationally um, here in the States, Canada, Mexico, outlying areas. And uh, we also released this here called Shona Knife, recorded live at the Mohawk Place, 2009. We did that last year, and they will be here uh, at the Mohawk Place again on the 2nd, perhaps, of uh, October. October. So, come on out and support the girls, man. They're here from Japan to make rock for you. Mm -hmm. And... Did I mention the Music Bazaar Festival? I did. <laughs> we'll talk about that more. You'll find that we'll mention this many times throughout <laughs> the interview. All right. Okay, let me close the doors here. Oh, also I forgot to mention, back there in those offices, Bob Muscle uh, of Bob Muscle Photography uh, is back there as well. And he's been a partner in all our activities here, Goo Dolls and uh, Studio related. This is the actual GCR Audio Studios up here. Come on up. John Stork back here many, many years later. He's probably designed thousands and thousands of studios since uh, he built this.
this one, but he came back and helped us redesign it for more modern applications. That's actually Ani playing up here many, many years ago when she was young, playing in this room. And there's the <laughs> street billboard from uh, our uh, Tizzy at the Girl release. Those are all over New York. So I managed to hang on to one of those along the way. This is our main studio room here. This is uh, the actual recording space. <clears throat> Pretty high ceilings, so there's a lot of, a lot of echo and reverb and ambience in the room, which is something that a lot of people don't have the luxury of having as much space, you know, to record their homes in. Back hiding there, peering between the uh, glass there, that's Justin Rose. He's one of our engineers. He actually, is our, he's our chief engineer, and he runs the joint. He's not one of our engineers. He's the engineer. Uh... Yeah, so uh, if you notice, there's like no parallel surfaces in this room at all. So you don't get creepy standing waves and things that are difficult to manage once you pull a project together and try to mix it. So you can actually use the space and get the sound of the room as opposed to have to uh, go back to some machines and recreate the sound of a room like this, you know. Right. You don't have to add the effects. Yeah, them all. it's all right here, and it's nice. really natural sound. It's, you know, most of the gear that's in here actually comes with the place. Pretty much everything that's in the room right now is ours right now. Actually, everything in the room right now is ours. So all the guitars, drums, amps that you see here, you know, are all available when you come into work. Pretty crazy selection of microphones. If you take a look, you can get more info on our website which is gcraudio.com. Got some, some pretty nut stuff on in here. This is our dead room. <laughs> I'll have to say it again. If you come out in here, this is our dead room. <laughs> That's why you couldn't hear me, because it's so dead in here. Uh, yeah, and with these doors closed up, pretty much every surface is padded now in this room. The ceiling is padded. The floors are padded. Curtains will cover up. The, when the glass here, if you want to open the glass, you can, obviously, and use this as an isolation booth as well, so singers can sing in here while the bands are playing, and you don't get that racket in their microphone. So you can go back and fix stuff. And here. This is the safe. I'm not going to tell you what's in there. said this whole selection of guitars comes with the plays so we have pretty much every standard rock flavor you would desire as far as amps and guitars so if you showed up with nothing but some good ideas you could come here and make a pretty good record you know and know that all the gear that you're going to touch is going to be in top working shape yeah which is you know no. That's when you just want to make music. If someone has if someone has a specific rig and they want to bring it in. Can yeah, you can bring in anything you like, yeah. you know. Yeah, you can bring in anything you like. Um, most bands come in with stuff and they have the things that they like, you know, but then you start, if they have the time, you start introducing flavors, you know, and uh, once they realize what's here, it's pretty interesting, you know, to them. Right. To people who are inquisitive, you know, it's pretty interesting. And this is the actual mission control here. <clears throat> this is, uh, all this gear that you're seeing here is, uh, pretty high-end stuff. These are old radio compressors from the 50s and 60s that, uh, now we use to do vocals with, or we used to, uh, take the digital signals that exist now make them a little bit more uh, real and warm and human sounding, a little less, a little less digital. Um, let's see what else we got back here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, here, 
this is from a tank. We think it's a military grade compressor that uh, would have run uh, probably radio transmissions somewhere along the way. This is an old broadcast compressor as well. And a lot of the stuff, like these are retros, these are redesigns of the real stuff. Right. That's what most people have, you know. Um, they're a little less expensive, much, much less temperamental, you know. But if you got guys who know what's going on, you know, uh, you'll never find a piece that sounds as good as this. Uh, you know, then I'll tell you, you'll never find a piece that sounds as good as the level that it's like, that is new, you know. It's just got its own character. And, um, and once again, when you, when you start critically listening and, uh, or you have someone recording the music who is able to listen critically, which is a whole another conversation. Um, which we'll get to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think I think there's uh, you know I think there's an endless things you can do in a place like this. This is an SSL console. Um, this <laughs> this is what all the kids like to make rock on. Um, the reason they like to make rock on this is because they have it in their computer. Um, there's a graphic of this in a program called SSL that goes on your plugins of your Pro Tools. So they see these knobs and they, and they recognize this, and it's amazing. We had a console that was probably twice as valuable as this one, a boutique console called an API, and beautiful, beautiful console. But it didn't have that, that look to it that all the kids knew. And when they came in here and they see this now, and when I say kids, you know, I mean the younger bands that are coming up right now. They watch videos, you know, and they see these band, you know, their friends' bands in the studio, and you know, and this is what makes those records. And actually, this console in particular has made a lot of those records, you know, because we bought it from a fairly notable producer and brought it from his studio into this room. So the sound is, is in this, you know, that, that sound that they're looking for is inside there. And back in here, this is our machine room and that's where all the brains for uh, all the uh, speakers you can see the large these are George Augsburger mains that we have up here and these are the, that, that's all the amplifiers the crossovers and controls and if you come around to this side here and shoot this way you'll see this is our uh, computer that runs the console because the console was built in 1983 my iPhone can do probably a hundred thousand times the calculations that this one can do but it takes you know, it's the size of a, of a refrigerator and it runs on uh, what's that, really? these things <laughs> <laughs> So that's uh, pretty much how the building rocks here, and um, you know, like I said, you know, we built it to make our last record in, and we were here for probably 18, probably 18 weeks writing, and then we came back again with Tim Palmer, and we spent about like a month here recording drums, bass, guitars, and uh, Guitars. We didn't do any vocals here. We just did all the music. Music, yeah. Yeah. And then we went back out to LA and finished all the vocals. And um, we actually spent two chunks of time with Tim here. Um, we, he had to go back to LA for a couple weeks, so we took a couple weeks off and then came back again. And um, yeah, and then we brought it out. And the very last mix of the record we actually did in this room, which oh, was kind of odd. Yeah, like uh, you know we all kind of came full circle, you know, after four producers and I heard four seven producers, studios. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Number of studios, number of producers. Yeah, yeah. How did that coordinate? I'm curious, when you have that many people working on it. Well, you know, don't. It, was, it wasn't supposed to be that way. Oh, like, okay. That was never the plan, you know. Um, the plan initially, when we first came for those first 18 weeks, was we were just going to set up microphones and play. And we spent a long time doing that, and 
came out of it with a lot of good demos, pretty much. We learned that we weren't that band, you know, that would come in and do that. So we uh, moved on and uh, found Tim Palmer, and we worked with Tim for a little while in L.A., uh, just writing, you know, oh, just, yeah. just making sure that we had our act together, you know, enough to go in and start putting microphones up, because we had been through that once already. Yeah, I heard you scrapped it and kind of started over. Well, no, not that, that. I mean, we never really knew when we had started. You know what I mean? Like, we started recording from the minute we were done with the tour. Like, we had microphones up and we were recording everything. But, you know, I, our idea was at the beginning, as it always is, is, you know, we want to get this record out as quickly as possible. But, you know, the universe, you know, grabs hold of your situation and it's going to go and it's going to do what it is. You know, you're not, you're not going to spit out a bunch of crap for at least you're not gonna be around 25 years later if you're gonna spit out a bunch of crap just to get it out you know right. uh, you know so you know we spend a lot of time and you know there's people in our organization who are very 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 critical probably a lot more critical than myself um and, you know but whatever chemistry happens between all those you know uh, groups of people you know seems to be working for us right now so now you took part in the production too how hard was that to produce your own Stop. Well, I think I, we say that. I mean, I guess if we would have went and just hired someone and said, you're the producer, then it would have been that way. But we sort of felt like we had gone through so much of the process already. And then as we were recording, because we were so intimate with the process, we really didn't let go of that part ever. And right. so even though we had brought Tim in, it never really felt like he had complete control of the project like it had in some other records that we had done, you know, with, you know, especially Rob Cavallo when we didn't even know how to make records, you know, I mean, right. you know, or Armand Petrie from Buffalo before that, you know, because, you know, I, I've worked at this building since I was a kid, you know, I, I started here when I was 18 years old, you know, back in the 80s, and, um, you know, I, I knew how to wind microphone cables, but I certainly didn't know how to make records, you know, and right. so I had a lot of people, Mike Sack, he ran this room, Kim Farillo from down the, from, from down the way that I opened Chameleon West with, uh, Alan Baumgartner, all these guys, you know, who have been, Jim Calabrese, he's another studio owner here in town, a guy named Alan Dussel, a guy named Dave Blanca, like, these are all guys, you know, who would let me sit in here with them and, and, you know, learn how to do this stuff, and, um, but you know this process as we sort of moved ahead it sort of it sort of felt like we knew sort of what we wanted to do a little bit more than we had in the past and especially our last record we worked with Glenn Ballard and when you work with a guy like Glenn Ballard you know you don't walk in like you walk in with the legal understanding that he's producing your record you know like right. that's how it works you know he's a factory that's what he does and and uh, I think that we we I'm glad I had that experience, but I also know that we sort of lost control of that record a little bit, and so we didn't want that to happen this time. So right. I think that that's where that all came from. Yeah, I was curious. Now, we're talking about something for the rest of us, the new Goo Goo Dolls CD mm -hmm. that was just released. Right. And you've got tons of stuff going on. I did yeah, listen Tuesday. to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I listened to it, and I just um, I noticed it's a little uh, little more somber than some previous Times are a little. Like I think it, yeah. Times are a little bit more somber right now. Yeah, you know, I, agree. I, I think. Uh, you know, you try to make a, you, you try to make a record that shows, what you've been through for the past few years, and and I think anybody can, and maybe not just you. And I I, right. I I don't think that you means you know. No. Someone right. in the group, but you know what the world has been through. You know what people have been through. It's very relatable. I think. Yeah, and I think that you know. A lot of people are, are a little freaked out right now. I sure am, you know, about a lot of the stuff that's going on. And um, so, you know, I guess if we're trying to be real about stuff, you know, then I guess it's going to be re reflected that way. Right. Yeah, you mm. nailed it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so that one's out. Now, also, what you've got, you're here in Buffalo, your hometown. Mm. And uh, you've got Music is Art coming yeah. out this week. Let's talk a little bit more about that. It's a huge, big deal for you. Now, you actually founded the organization. Yeah, we, we started out, we'd, we I had a festival right down the street from here uh, during the Allentown Art Festival. Right. Yeah, and it was met with some uh, anger by by those folks. And 
all of a sudden they really decided that it was time to, uh, uh, oh. yeah, ma'am, your arm's going to let me absolutely falling asleep, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, cool. Sorry, man, we just sort of went, you know? Yeah, we, started, uh, we got all engrossed yeah, in this we sort of bone of contention. Yeah, uh. no, uh, yeah you, know, you know, uh, we started, we started it in 2003, and the Town Festival was happening here. I had always loved the Allentown Festival. I had always gone when I was a kid. You know, I saw my first hippie there. That's what I always tell people. Right. Like, it really had an effect on me. You know, like, you know, you grow up in your group of people. You know, you do your thing. And, you know, I grew up in South Buffalo. And, you know, we are you know, just a real normal South Buffalo family, I guess. And I got to come here and see see the, the, this freaky scene, man. So, like, I can remember being, like, 16 and, go, you know, 15 and being, like, okay, I, I got to get up there, you know. So we'd come up here and we'd hang around and, you know, look at all the freaky people. And that was my exposure to it. You know, that was my exposure to downtown. That, that was my exposure to what this scene is down here. And as I saw it go on and as I saw it grow up and I left for about 10 years and I came back and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is this is like not what I remember, you know? This is like, this is much different than I remember. Right. Now, I still think it's amazing that they do that. I think any time you can do something in Buffalo where there's 100,000 people walking around, like, to me. It's a big deal. Right on, man. Like, you know, I am so happy that you're doing this. But the thing that bummed me out was that whole thing I was talking about wasn't there. Like, it wasn't there. It was like, it was like cool, you know, there's cool stuff, but, like, it wasn't, like, that thing wasn't there, that thing that made my eyes go, wah, you know, when I walked up here when I was a kid, it wasn't there, and I wanted to give that to kids here, like, so I decided to attach this thing to the side of it, so I booked, like, 60 bands or something over two days and in my parking lot at my old recording studio down the street, and, uh, they tried, it, it, it was really funny, actually, because, I mean, now I guess it's in a <laughs> in hindsight it's funny you know they were they were calling the cops on us and like putting trying to put like like injunctions against us and i would go downtown and I'd yell and scream and tv stations would all us down there and you know it'll be on the tv and the newspaper would be like banging on my door you know what i mean it was it was like they were giving me so much publicity right. for this little thing i was doing and it involved, it involved so many people um, that I couldn't believe they couldn't see why it was good. You know? Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, it was, it just blew my mind. And to this day, like, I had this dream that, like, one day, like, they're going to go, hey, you know what? Let's do that now. Let, let, let's do that. You know? Like, to me, like, that would be so cool. I love where we are now. All right now. I love it. I love it. I love it. I really do. Louis Grouches, who, who, who is, who's the... Uh, curator over there he's 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 a good friend of mine and i i really feel like he's the type of person that can take what's here in this city so obviously here in this city and 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 help showcase it you know right. and um he's willing to take chances and you know willing to have willing to have a group of people who are very vocal I'm not going to say the majority, but a group of people who are very vocal criticize him and understand that you have to accept criticism from people in order right. to make things grow and change. It's just the way it is. You know, I mean, my band's a pretty good example of that. Right. You know, you know, there's a few kids in Doc Martens around here that want to, you know, that would love to punch me in the face, you know, because, right. you know, like, you know, whatever, you know, they think we've gone places that maybe we shouldn't or whatever. But I think you have to be brave enough to take those steps and move, and I think he is, you know, and, and, uh, and, and anyway, I really respect him, you know, and so we're there now, and uh, it's our eighth year. Does it feel like you're a permanent home now, because I know you had a few different Yeah, it's been three years, room. yeah, yeah, we did one year at the Erie County Fair, and I was actually in Japan at the time, we were, we were doing, we were doing a tour over there, and, and so I wasn't able to be here, and so I can't even tell you firsthand what it was like, quite honestly, but... The feeling I got <laughs> from absolutely everybody I talked to was that, like, get it out of there as quickly as you possibly can, you know. And they were so nice to me, and it, it felt 
it felt so horrible to have to go back and tell him I just can't do this again because it just didn't work, you know, like right. it just didn't work, unfortunately. And you know, those people are really cool people, though. You know, we had some of the most fun meetings I've ever been to, nice. you know, with them because you know I, that's why I do this because it's fun, you know, and yeah. so it's, it's about having fun. And um, but since we came to the Albright. I, I really feel like that's the home for this type of thing. The way it's set up with all the levels and we have stages all over the place. You know, we have stages that are up high and stages that are down low and stages that are in the middle and stages that are on the side and inside and outside. And, you know, it's really pretty crazy. Uh, and this year we'll have 80 bands about, I think, wow. through the course of the day. And when I say bands, let me rephrase that, 80 musical acts, dancing acts magicians, DJs, you know, total names on the roster, about 80 people, uh, 50 artists displaying stuff, live art, projectionists, um, yeah, it really has turned into a crazy scene, and, you know, 90% of it is from right here in town, you know, you know, the overwhelming majority, right. yeah, you know, it, you know, at least 90% of it is from right here, and, it really feels like that was that thing that I was trying to make happen again. You right. know? I mean, there's been times in the past, you know, where we've done things like hang people from hooks from through their skin in front of people. And I got big time hassles for that stuff, man. Big yeah, time. Sure. Like, uh, like crazy. You know, we had anal pudding play a couple of years. Big time trouble, man. You know, um, but you know what? It's short. They're blasts, man. It's quick, you know? It's quick. And, like, I feel like if something's really bugging you, well, then, you know what? Grit your teeth for just two seconds, man, because it's going to be done, and there's probably going to be something there you like. And that's what the idea of this whole thing is supposed to be, you know, is that there's this rhythm, man, and that's going to happen. And I just throw as many people as I possibly can in and hope it works. And every year it's gone pretty good. And... We're trying to jam about 75 pounds of stuff in a 60-pound oh. bag this year. <laughs> and um, But I know it's going to be exciting. And, um, you know, I know the event is going to be representative of what we like to think the Music is Art organization it's is okay. in general. And just so I can touch on that a touch. I'm so excited about the oh, festival no, no, right now. Great. I can't really talk and about I much else. I saw your chart down there, and I'm thinking, how do you have time? To organize all that, plus do come two out tours, with come put out all these records. Yeah, I don't know. Do <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't sound possible, <laughs> no. does it? Um, <laughs> and we just got a lot of great people, man. You know, there's people who care here. You know, there really are. And you know, it's hard because sometimes, like, I'll be sweeping by myself at seven in the morning on on Franklin Street. You know, after there have just been ten thousand people standing in my in my yard. You know, over the over the course of a day. And I'm there by myself, and I'm like, wait a minute, why am I here by myself <laughs> brushing cups up, you know? But eventually, you know, people come back and, you know, help. And right. But my point is, is that there's enough people who are into things here. You know, I mean, there's not much money. It costs a lot of money to put this event on because we there's things that we have to rent, a lot of stuff that we have to rent, a lot of... Uh, uh, technicalities, you know, technical things, you know, permitting, insurance, you know, all this kind of stuff to actually make it work. But ultimately, if it weren't for the fact that there's a couple thousand people, seriously, a couple thousand people who are going to all put their hat in the ring to make this thing happen. Like, this isn't, like, about any one band, man. No, you know, it's this is thing. about Buffalo being able to do this. Right. That's all this is about. Like, I don't think, I don't know anywhere else that this happens. Seriously. No. I don't know anywhere else that this happens. It's like, I mean, two, <laughs> I tell people sometimes, yeah, they play like two songs, three songs, and people are like, what? And I'm like, yeah, man, I know. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? You know? There's like 80 I know, <laughs> I know. But, you know, um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm so proud of the city that we can make this happen every year, you know? And, you know, just getting back to the music is our organization, you know, in general, you know, we run programming throughout the year. You right, know. this is the main event. Yeah, some people know that, some people don't, you know, but I think the fact that we can keep bringing this this event back every year and have this be sort of the, the you know, the moment that we can make the shine, right? you know, and let people kind of know what we're doing. And, you know, we pimp, 
that's a bad word when you're talking about educational programming. You shouldn't say pimp out educational pro programming. We try to promote our educational programming as well as we possibly can, but there's like this fine line you gotta walk. Like, I don't wanna be banging people over the head with it because that's not why they're there. Right. You know, that's not why they're there. And my hope is that the momentum of the excitement of being there makes, like, 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 last throughout the year. Right. You know, it makes people want to be involved with the programming that we do. And it's a good recruitment tool for that. You know, and when I say recruitment tool, I, I don't mean that in the, you, you know, in the, the, uh, you know, backhanded, you know, lying way that a lot of folks do when they say recruitment. I mean it in the, the I mean it in the way that you can find those people who have it in their heart to do this kind of right. thing. Right, and they're going to come. Yeah, regardless. by themselves. Exactly. See what I mean? And, yeah. like, that's the only way you know you got good people, you know, because you can go out looking, but, you know, man, it's like that's not the same. Like, when someone comes to you and wants to do something, right. then it's got way more of a chance of working you than you coming to someone, come, right? yeah, than walking up to someone and going, hey, can you do this for me, you know, right. and, yeah. Now, how do you select, I know there are a lot of performers, yeah. I've heard that, you know, some people don't get into the performance. Yeah, body. that's, Maybe yeah, that's always been tough, man. Um, when we first started, it wasn't that big of a deal because it was just all our friends, right, you, you know, go. so we would just call our friends and we'd be like, hey, you know, here's, like, we kind of, like, we barely knew 60 bands, you know, right. so, you know, but we found 60 bands and, you know, we'd stick anybody on, someone would walk up with guitars, we'd be like, play, you know, yeah. go ahead, and, uh. But as the years went on, we started taking submissions, and we had 400-some submissions this year wow. for just for music. You know, that's not even dance or DJs or, 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 or artists or anything. That was just music. And at the time, I only had 40 slots, and that's why the sets got a little smaller this year, right. shorter, you know, because I wanted to involve as many people as I could, you know. Um, the only people who play longer than the, the two-song, ten-minute set are the people who play at stages that aren't in the main area. Oh, okay. Yeah, and some of those sets are 20 minutes. Some of those sets are 40 minutes. We have a brand new stage. We have an Americana stage this year that we're going to have out front of the, of the uh, uh, gallery on the Elmwood side. And so we're going to let them do longer sets because it's new over there. So they're going to be doing 40-minute sets, and then we'll have hip-hop there at night, too, which uh, which is going to be banging, I think. it's I, I think it's going to be really fun, yeah. As soon as it gets dark, you know, we'll start doing hip-hop over there. And Also in the front, Clifton Hall, we've never done that before. We're going to have uh, Mark Freeland. Uh, we're doing an exhibit of his stuff, like a salute to the DJ type thing. We're going to have DJ, DJs in there all day and have his all his DJ-related art up around because we we've done a mark mark was involved in the first you know four festivals uh, before he passed away and since then we've had him involved still in whatever capacity right. we can every year and carla i was actually just over at carla's house uh moments ago his uh girlfriend and uh we we're putting together the show and uh nice. talking about it so it's gonna be a lot of fun so you know we we try to expand things yeah, it seems it's just getting yeah. bigger and bigger. But I do wonder what you look for when when you're choosing your performance. That was the question. I'm yeah. sorry. No, no. That's yeah, right. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry curious. about that. Yeah. Uh, what we do now is when the uh, submissions come in, Mark and myself go through the submissions that we know that there's bands that we have relationships with, like a band like Agent Me. Agent Me does our uh, high school awareness tours. Oh, okay. Wednesday Adams and, and, and the two girls that sing with her, they do high school awareness tours. So they're part of our music as our family because they work with us. So they play. And then we have our Battle of the Bands winners, you know, right. that, that, that are on there as well. So there's some things that are sort of figured in, you know, because they're bands that work with Music as Art or uh, the uh, Music in Action kids. All their bands play too as well and music in action is another program that we run in the schools and they produce a cd throughout the year and so there's about four of those bands that play as well and then we go through the whole rest of the list and we poke through and we try to see the names that we know 
from reading magazines and websites and message boards. Like the people who have like stepped forward and tried really hard to get you to know who they are. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, this, I've seen this 10 times, you know? So that goes on a list and we go through and we sort of pare down the list and it usually gets pared down by 50% usually because by that time we're like, okay, we're down to 200. That's good. And then we hand it off to a couple of people and we have them pick through the list. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then through those selection processes, we bring them all back again, and then we count the votes, and then those bands end up getting in. Oh, that's good. Nice. Yeah. So it's diplomatic. Yeah, so it together. starts off with us. And it finishes. Well, it finishes with us only because it comes back to us, and then we right. get to calculate, you know, and we also get to add all these other bands that I talked about, right. you know, who are bands who have been active with the music and our, excuse me, with the music is our programming. So, between those two situations, we end up where we are. But we had so many this year, and literally, like, like the ties for like, you know, like the number one spot like filled everything. It was crazy because wow. you know people were picking through, and you know some people would pick, you know, four bands. Some people would pick, you know, twenty bands. You know, and so it was funny to see. Uh, the bands that popped out, you know, from that, because we didn't know what was going to come back, you know, we never know right. what's going to come back, you know, when it comes back, and, you know, I never really know what the other people's selection processes are, you know what I mean, like, because I kind of don't ask, you know, so, you got enough to yeah, do well, I don't know, like, I mean, I think most of the time people choose based on the, the professionalism of the band, like, if they think they're going to show up and not be drunk, you know, like, because they don't want to refer someone to me who's going to be a problem. Right. You know, because, you know, these are all my friends, you know, and my business associates, you know. So, um, but I do feel like we're starting to get to a point where we either need more time or we need another day or something. Because the demand for people, or not the demand, that's the wrong word, the, the uh, response, you know, to the uh, uh, submissions is, is just out of control now. And we're getting to a point where it's just so hard to well, do. A weekend festival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two days. Yeah, well, originally it was two days, right, you know, right. yeah. And, you know, every band played three songs, you know. Now it's one day and every band plays two songs, so, right. you know, yeah. But it's ten to ten, right? Um, Maybe theoretically theoretically, theoretically. Could last a little yeah longer. well yeah we usually start a little early just because i think it's funny like <laughs> you know like i think it's hilarious to have people playing dance music at like 8 a.m you know <laughs> you know and so like as soon as the pa is hooked up i usually start you know nice. uh yeah and um <laughs> my father's on on our uh uh sorry a little sidebar here my father's on our our board of directors right and uh, it's so funny to watch us that day because, like, I'm just out of my mind, right? It's like, ah, and, like, you know, like, right. to me, like, those moments of the 8.30 in the morning, you know, DJ, like, that's as important as anything else because it's just so funny to me. And, like... You need that. Well, that's why, like, that, like, like I said, that's the nature of this, you know? And my wife did it, too. Ah. She was the first DJ on, too, and it was, it was, it was just awesome. She came dressed up like a geisha and stuff. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And uh, she's been to music and stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, those moments are what make it exciting, you know? Like, me being able to march through, like, like, like lead a marching band round, you know? Like, like, God, who wouldn't want to do that? You know, it's so much fun, you know? Or, like, like, uh, I don't know, like, play, like, uh, I, I, I put a band together with Ryan Miller and and uh, uh, Drew Stafford. Oh, yeah, and, and we play like a cheap trick song. You know, like who wouldn't want to do that? You know, like it's fun. You know, and if you can keep that excitement up and keep it exciting, you know, then once again, people are gonna take a look at what we're doing and go, "Wow, this might be fun." You know, this might be fun to be involved with in general. You know, right. then when we bring them in to help with the program, and they start to learn that maybe it's not just all that. You know, like, me, it's not just about leading the marching band around. It's not, right, you know. Matter. Yeah, it's about it's about taking all these people and sort of putting them into this one ballet or whatever. Right. You know, th this thing, you know, that we're referring to. And show everybody that this kind of thing can happen. Like, if you apply this concept to cleaning up, 
You know, like, let's do it on Grant Street. Right. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, if you apply this concept, I think I think it's cool, you know? And, and I think you can get people excited. So, I don't know, down the line, you know, who knows what will happen. But, you know, uh, to me, it's just nice to see it happen one day here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Eight years running strong. Music is art. The festival is happening this Saturday. And uh, it's going to be at Albright Knox Art Gallery in downtown Buffalo. This is uh, Robbie Taycat yeah. from the Goo Goo Dolls. He's got all kinds of things going on. Aside from music is art, he has a new CD. Something for the rest of us. Prop. Goo Goo Dolls. Prop, prop. And? <laughs> and bring it on. The new I Love J-Rock CD. That he produced. So he's got a lot of things going yeah. on. Check him out. BackstageAccess.com. Thanks for checking in.